Hello. So, before we get started on this new series, I thought it was probably best if I at least address the elephant in the room that is the current lawsuit against Blizzard and stuff. I'm not going to sit here wobbling my jowls. I just figured it would be a bit weird if this video started like, All right, mates, how's it going? Nothing to see here. I've been under a rock for the past couple of weeks, but I'm sure everything's fine. The thing is, uh, problems don't go away if you just ignore them. They tend to get worse. But at the same time, I don't really think my voice is the voice to be listening to on this subject. Sometimes it's better to just listen to the folks that actually experience this kind of thing uh, and were victims of this kind of thing and hear them and believe them and not roll your eyes and start moaning about wokeness. So I've put a whole bunch of links in the description for videos that you have probably already watched because most of them have bigger channels than me and some charities that have been floating about since that Activist walkout thing the other day. It's not a definitive list. There are probably a lot more videos and charities that we should all be watching and learning from and donating to and so on and so forth. You absolutely don't have to do any of these things if you don't want to. But I do think that uh, the types of people that seem to be forming opinions on videos they haven't even watched uh, or lawsuits they blatantly haven't even read maybe need to take a long hard look in the mirror and then headbutt themselves. Um, but in terms of this channel, as you can see, I'm going to stick with the WoW stuff for now. I think we're still allowed to enjoy this world and these characters, despite how awful things allegedly were behind the scenes. Uh, I think it's important to celebrate the work put in by folks at Blizzard that were potentially victims the entire time they were working on these things. Uh, and it's also important to acknowledge that this is more than just a game for a lot of people. Some folks have spent the last 17 years on Azeroth and made all sorts of memories and friends and stuff. People have formed meaningful relationships. They've met their wives or husbands through World of Warcraft and then maybe started families with those people. And then now their children play World of Warcraft. <laughs> people have literally poured their heart and soul into creating art and fan fiction and memes and machinimas and all sorts of stuff in this community. So I guess I'm just not really willing to give up on all of that just yet. Um, but anyway, without further ado, here's the new series. I hope you enjoy this chapter one whatever video. Bye bye Alright mates, how's it going? In today's video, we're starting a new series, The Last Guardian by Jeff Grubb. I'm skipping the prologue this time and going straight into chapter one. So let's go! A young man stood in the courtyard of Karazhan, desperately trying to remember his own name. He was absolutely petrified of what he had to do next, which was to present a crimson sealed letter of introduction to the most powerful mage of Azeroth. The scholars of the Kirin Tor had told this boy that this was an honour, an opportunity, they'd said, but that was a load of bollocks. In truth, the Kirin Tor had been trying to place an inside man within Karazhan for years, but up until recently, its inhabitant, Medivh, had just completely ignored them. So when the mysterious wizard's sudden request for an assistant arrived at Dalaran, the Kirin Tor were more than happy to comply. So, this particular youth was selected and shuttled off with a list of directions, orders, counter orders, requests, suggestions, and demands, etc. Things like ask Medivh about his mother and find out all you can about elven history. One person even asked him to sift through Medivh's collection of bestiaries because they were completely and utterly convinced that there was a fifth type of troll that no one knew about. But Norlan, the chief artificer, had advised the youth to be direct, forthright, and honest. All traits of the great mages Medivh apparently seemed to value. Be diligent. Do what you're told. Don't slouch. Always seem interested. And above all, keep your ears and eyes open. Now, some people would probably view all this curiosity as slightly suspicious, but it was actually kind of normal. The Conclave were an insatiably curious bunch. Hell, it's probably my own curiosity that got me selected in the first place, the young man thought to himself. He'd gained a bit of a reputation after wandering the halls of the Violet Citadel at night and uncovering a few secrets that his masters would have preferred to have been kept quiet, like the Chief Artificer's fondness for flame wine, or Corrigan the Librarian's secret demon porn collection. And there was something about some guy called Orexus. He'd disappeared, or died, and for some reason the others chose to make no mention of it, even removed any evidence of Orexus's name, which was a bit weird. But basically, this young man had a knack for sniffing out juicy deets, and it was entirely possible that his mentors viewed him as a little too good at ferreting out information and were quite happy to see the back of him. The young man then took a deep breath, steeled himself and strode toward the tower itself, but as he drew nearer, 
there was a flicker of movement on a balcony above which caught his eye. And for a brief moment, he thought he saw a robed figure staring down at him before disappearing like some kind of ghost or something. It was a bit ominous, but a voice then came out of nowhere and scared the shit out of the boy. You are the new young man. The stooped thin figure then emerged out of the shadows and for a second, the prospective assistant wondered if Medivh had been mutating forest animals to work as his servants. Guy looked like a bold weasel. He said, you are the new young man. Sorry, Khadgar. Dalaran. Khadgar of Dalaran. In the kingdom of Lordaeron. I was sent by the Kirin Tor from the Violet Citadel of Dalaran. Khadgar then handed his sealed letter of introduction to the bold weasel servant. Right. Khadgar of Dalaran of Lordaeron of the Kirin Tor of the Violet Citadel of Dalaran. Great. He sent me to assist Medivh. Lord Medivh. The Wizard Medivh of Karazhan. Khadgar was fully aware he was babbling, so he tightly clamped his mouth shut so he could babble no more. I'm sure they did. The servant then reached into his own waistcoat and pulled out a set of black rectangles bound by a thin metal band. Blinders? No. Um, no thank you. Morose. What? I am Morose, steward of the tower, Castellan to Medivh. Blinders? Uh, no. Thank you, Morose. The servant turned and motioned to the Khadgar follow, and Khadgar picked up his rucksack and wondered what the hell that was all about. Are you alone in the tower? Eh? Are you alone? Do you live here by yourself? The Magus is here. Yes, of course. Wouldn't be much point for you to be here if he wasn't here. Of course, but anyone else? You, now. More work to take care of two than one. Not that I was consulted. Nobody tells me nothing. So just you and the wizard then, normally. And Cook. Though Cook doesn't talk much. Thank you for asking though. Khadgar tried to restrain himself from rolling his eyes, but failed. Hopefully the blinders on either side of Moreau's face kept him from seeing that. So why the blinders? Eh? The blinders. Why? Eh. The magic's strong here. Strong and wrong, sometimes. You see things, unless you're careful. I'm careful. Other visitors, the ones before you, they were less careful. They're gone now. Gadgar thought back to the ominous robed phantom he'd seen on the balcony and nodded. Cook has a set of rose quartz lenses. Swears by him. Cook's a dumbass. So, you've been in the Magus' household for long? Eh? Have you been with Medivh long? I yep. Long enough. Too long. Seems like years. Times like that here. What do you know about him? The Magus, I mean. The question is, what do you know? Surprisingly little, Gadgar thought. Considering every elder mage in Dalaran seemed to hold the guy in awe, there was precious little information available. He was a young man, apparently, as far as wizards went, merely in his forties, and for the vast bulk of that time, he'd seemed to have made no impact whatsoever on his surroundings, which was a feat in itself, to be fair. Independent wizards had a tendency to be extremely showy, and fearless in dabbling in secrets that man was not meant to know, and as a result, non-Dalaran mages always met the same grisly fate an explosion of their own making. The fact that Medivh had not completely obliterated himself on a molecular level could only mean that he either had great restraint or great power. But still, nothing in Khadgar's extensive research had ever indicated any great discovery or groundbreaking achievement to explain why Medivh was held in such high regard. Only small hints, like his mother. She was supposedly important, apparently. Eh? I don't know much. Of course you don't. And people never know much. Is what makes him young, I suppose. I meant I don't know much about Medivh. You... you asked. Did I? Huh. What is he like? Like everyone else. Has his moods. Good days and bad. Like everyone else. Puts his pants on one leg at a time. Nah. He levitates into them. The old servant looked at Khadgar with the slightest tug of a smile on his face. Eh? After climbing what felt like all of the stairs in the world, they arrived at a final, much narrower staircase that Khadgar surmised was likely the topmost tip of the tower. And upon ascending those, the two entered a small circular room that looked to serve as some kind of observatory. And inside said observatory was a man of middling years lost in thought, Medivh. Khadgar then took a step forward, but Morose raised a hand, causing Khadgar to freeze in place, almost as if transfixed with a magical spell. 
The servant then walked quietly over to his master, stood next to him, and waited, and waited, and waited. It felt like an eternity of waiting. Until finally, Medivh recognised his servant's presence, quickly jotted down some things in his notebook, and then turned to face his new guest. And as Khadgar looked into his potential new mentor's eyes for the first time, he saw something dance and flicker within. Something powerful. Perhaps uncontrollable. Something dangerous. Morose then handed the sealed letter of introduction to his master, and Medivh glanced down at it for a few moments. Didn't open it though, just kind of stared at the envelope, furrowed his brow ever so slightly, and the parchment then burst into flames. So, seems our young spy has arrived at last. And we're leaving it there! So you'll be pleased to know that there are only 16 chapters to this one, which means it should be over fairly quick, and we can move on to Tides of Darkness, which I know a number of you have been waiting very patiently for. As usual, links in the description if you want to buy the book, as well as for my Patreon page and my Discord server and all that stuff. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!